Bungay is an interesting mid-East Anglian town nestling gently on the borders between Suffolk and Norfolk. It has a long and associated history with the earliest settlements by the Romans following through to the Anglo-Saxons and the Danes and then of course later the Normans. And what is particularly interesting about this is the fact that much of the fabric of these periods is still here lingering in smaller pockets as you wander around the town. For example, Bungay Castle. All that's left is a ruined front of two towers, but the visual history of that particular location still stands out and in striking contrast to the rest of the town. And all the way through, one can get a feeling or resonance of the spiritual activity which has taken place here. And I have no doubt that Bungay would stand within the record books as one of the more outstanding and particularly haunted locations. Certainly today, whilst we were setting up on the camcorder in the cemetery here at St Mary's Church, we were able to pick up on the microphones what appeared to be the voice of a man talking. Unfortunately, it wasn't recording and so we don't have a copy of that so we're hopeful that a bit later on tonight when we return to this very quiet town we'll be able to pick up a lot more activity within the curtilage of the cemetery here at St Mary's Church. I'm actually standing in the grounds of what used to be a priory, a Benedictine priory, in the middle of what is today Bungay Town Centre. The ruins are attached to the present day St Mary's Church, which originally formed part of the actual priory. And as you can see, there's still a considerable amount of ruins left here for people to look at and to enjoy, and the site is open at all times for the public to access Unfortunately, St Mary's Church itself is now no longer used for current worship and is under the care of the Church's Conservation Trust. One of the more unusual exhibits of St Mary's Churchyard, amongst the plethora of gravestones that we can see around us, is this very and highly unusual stone. It's called the Druid Stone and it's alleged that if you dance around it 12 times in reverse the devil will appear. I think that looking at this stone it's probably what is known as an alluvial deposit and this would have been brought down and deposited here during the last ice age. The stone itself is quite interesting and in fact if you look at it from the first time it looks like a primitive gravestone but it, it's not. So the actual purpose of it, why it's been pushed to an upright position, I clearly don't know. St Mary's has a number of legends attached to it, one of which is actually affecting the whole town of Bungay. In the year 1577, one night, the church and the buildings immediately within the town centre were struck by an almighty storm. And accordingly, local legend ascribes this activity to a black dog called Shuck, who is actually the devil who descended from the sky with fire and lightning and created such havoc and destruction following which it moved on to the church at Blyborough which is some 15 miles distance and carried out the same thing there. But of course in the 16th century people were very basic and very primitive and did not fully understand how the weather system actually works and so this legend grew out of something which was an unfortunate natural act. One of the more interesting legends attached to the old priory at the churchyard at St Mary's in Bungay 
is the fact that on occasions people late at night have wandered through and heard the sound of monks singing in plain chant. In fact, this has continued over the centuries to the present day, and it's claimed that some people at night are so fearful that they avoid the churchyard at all possible costs. And now, of course, talking of places that people avoid, is the castle here in Bungay. In fact, the fortification, which was a curtain wall and castle keep, was created by Hugh Bygod, a feudal lord, and he built this massive keep in 1165. From this site, the truculent Hugh terrorised the local Saxons and at times illegally occupied the castles at Norwich and Orford. And in 1174, he supported Henry II's rebellious sons in an armed insurrection, which ended in surrender of the castle to the king's forces and the payment of 1,000 marks for his disloyalty. Hugh Bygod was later killed in Syria on a crusade in 1178. But a local legend is that Hugh, humbled after taking part in a foul rebellion against the king, was forced to pay a great deal of gold in order to keep his castle. And as a result, his ghost has returned to show his resentment, sometimes taking the form of a black dog. In 1969, an investigation at the old Three Tons public house in Bungay alleged that the building was haunted by 24 ghosts according to a local medium one of whom was a Mr Rex Bacon, an 18th century highwayman. Of course none of these stories can be confirmed and certainly from my visit today it did not reveal an indication of any activity whatsoever. And now what we're going to do we're going to wander off for the rest of our today's investigation. This is one of those amazing places. I'm actually standing inside an undercroft which is below a refectory which used to belong to an Augustinian priory of black cannons. The Herring Fleet or St Olaf's in Norfolk in the year 1239 when it was founded. This continued unfortunately to the year 1536 when King Henry VIII, with the dissolution of the Catholic Church, ordered for this particular sect to close down. It is, of course, under the care of English heritage and unfortunately is not open for nighttime investigations. So whilst I'm here today, I'm hoping that I might be able to pick or share something up which will be recorded on our microphones here. But in the meantime, please allow me to accompany you on a brief journey around this remarkable site. There's an interesting story attached to this site and regarding the Undercroft. It is said that it might be haunted by a man playing a flute. Historically, there is allegedly underground tunnels that connect the old priory to Burr Castle, which is a former Roman fortification which used to be on the coast nearby. And apparently these tunnels connect both together and they were discovered in the 14th century and a man playing the flute was the last to go in with a crowd of people exploring these tunnels and as he went into the tunnels you could hear his music playing 
faintly as it gradually became quieter and quieter and him and the party of people were never ever seen again from these tunnels which are believed to be now filled in. That to me sounds very much like um, an old wives tale but it's one which has lingered over the centuries and I think is possibly if you like a testament to the history of this very unusual location. And now we're returning back to Bungay in Suffolk for the rest of our today's investigation. Okay, we're now at St Mary's Church in Bungay and of course Miss St Mary's Church backs on. It was originally the Priory Church for Greyfriars Priory and we're actually standing in the cemetery churchyard area which contains the remains of the original building. And what we're proposing to do, there's quite a few vehicles passing around the town at the moment. They've had a Shakespeare evening tonight at the castle and that's why we sent, we didn't go back there for anything. Um, so what we're going to do is spend an hour or so wandering around this churchyard and possibly over the road is a thousand year old Saxon church with a fairly sizable churchyard but both have light sensors so I'm not sure whether or not it's going to be safe for us to wander around there because of the light pollution but for now we're going to wander around this churchyard and hopefully pick up some interesting activity. There is a light breeze and I can feel it blowing now but that shouldn't affect us unduly and of course it is a beautifully warm night so it should be good for us to go and you're looking forward to it Sean? So I am. So it should be a good one. Let's carry on then. Actually it looks quite good with the lights doesn't it? Yeah. But I think we're looking at EVP here aren't we essentially? Yeah more than anything. I've got my torch so if we pick anything up. Sadly, this lovely old building is uh, completely redundant and is the property of the Church's Conservation Trust, which is essentially a wing of the Church of England. The redundant churches that could not be handed over for any other use, so they become museums for want of a better word. And if they don't look after them, they end up as ruined, as with the old priory at the back. Anything, Sean? No. It's all quiet, is it? Yeah, unfortunately it's going to be, it's, a, it's not too noisy here, but there are one or two people wandering around, and I'm certainly feeling things around here. It's not totally sterile, you know. Sorry, what happened? I see when we were just talking there about the graves, and I said, yeah, the ones like pauper graves, and I yeah. got a cracking headache all of a sudden. Just something just comes straight up to me. It's gone now. Wishful thinking, eh? Wow. Well, that would be pauper.
because of the light. Camera. Oh, sorry. You're right in me, <laughs> glaring in my face. Let me just turn this off. Okay, we've been here about 20 minutes. Because there are lights within the churchyard, I personally, for myself, don't think it will make any major change to the type of activity here. But there's also the 1,000 year old church down the road, which is worth looking at. What's it called? Holy Trinity. Sorry? Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity Church is just down the road. So, what we're going to do, we're going to wander down there. There is a security trigger there, so if the lights do go on, then we're going to come back here. But keep the camera running, Sean, and we'll just wander down there and we'll see what happens. I'll walk ahead of you. Some people when they come to the UK may notice on some walls these holes which originally had railings and wonder what, what has happened here. Well basically during World War II as part of a propaganda drive to keep morale up they asked everyone to rip up as much iron and metal as they could to be converted into armaments but these metal holes and posts and fences were of such low quality they had absolutely no use whatsoever for uh, material military use and so a lot of this metal which was artistically valuable and historic became history when it was melted for scrap and so in in effect we lost didn't we mm, yeah. we lost a lot of high quality metalwork in england and so now many places are just these bare stubs About and 90, they've never been replaced 90 percent isn't it I was going to say there's the... Yeah. You didn't come round far enough. Did you just hear that? Yeah, whistle. Yeah. And I that thought was it. it was someone in the street. I thought it was. I thought it was someone just behind us. I can't see anyone in the street, but I, that's where I thought it came from. But yeah, I definitely heard a yeah. whistle. And of course the flag flapping. No, I thought I actually thought it was just behind us. It's a bit windy, isn't it? quite freezes today, isn't it? Mm. Well, I'm glad it has been. Not often you're in the grounds of a, Sax of a Saxon church. twice in one yeah, day. I just heard a whistle again. Any friendly spirits? Could you come across please and tell me tell us your name or could you give us an indication of your presence please?
kind of weird. We never normally do an investigation in a town, do we? The nearest yeah. we've got to, I think, is a village, which is Aot St Lawrence and also Walberswick in uh, Suffolk. Mm. Yeah, so the one in Hertfordshire, one in Suffolk. But they were the only two. The others have always been remote locations. Is it there, no one? <laughs> truth there's not that many around this no. area there's not that many ruined churches so they're easy to get to should we uh, wander back to the other churchyard yes yeah, seem to be very exciting here, does it really? But we don't know what we've got, that's the thing. Basically what's happened tonight, as you've gathered from this investigation, we visited two locations, which is here, which is St Mary's Church with Greyfriars Priory remains at the rear and across the road at the Saxon Church which is over a thousand years old which is Holy Trinity. We're not sure whether or not we've captured anything to take. Our things are always perpetually crossed hoping that we may have and of course by the time you've watched this video you would have seen what type of results we've borne from this investigation and as you can hear the clock is going, it's now time to go home. It's 11 o'clock at night and we thank you for joining us here. And have you had a good time, Sean? I certainly have. And you had one minor overshadow, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that was an ear. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>